uh, I was standing in a kitchen full of empty cabinets with my fiance and we were trying to figure out how we were going to feed our two year old. And at that time I was, you know, I was going to school full time. I was working full time. I was trying to be a full time dad and, and, and somehow I still ended up falling short. And so that night just kind of lit a burning desire in me to just find a different way to provide for my family. And so, uh, shortly after that in January, we launched, uh, the social media guy with right now currently uh, coaching students, coaching other agencies. So, um, like, as you know, like I sold the fitness, uh, agency. So I'm coaching other agency, na- agencies now. So, uh, we've had, I've seen some students have a drop in customers, um, temporarily, but for the most part, everybody's still, you know, there's been nobody that it has just brought to a complete halt. Um, and I think, you know, just the main difference between the people that it's really massively affecting and the people that it's, you know, they've got hit, but they're not necessarily down and out is, is just the, is just the fact that, the, they're hustling, right? Right. So w- would you say that people mostly now are instead of like having like a brick and mortar, they're actually turning their business online? Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, more now than ever. Um, I, I, we've seen a lot of uh, fitness entrepreneurs make those pivots and uh, switch to online classes and, uh, and hosting lives and Facebook groups and all that good stuff. So definitely. Okay, great. So um, yeah, I want to start off, you know, by uh, sharing to our audience, like, you know, who you are and what you do. So I want to start off with First, talking about your agency. So you said you were able to sell your agency at the age of 21. So, I mean, that's, you know, like people can't even do that. And some people like, won't even have the opportunity to do that in, in a lifetime, right? You did it at the age of 21. Yeah, man, extremely blessed. And things ultimately, uh, you know, just ended up falling into place and we were able to make that uh, transfer happen. So, yeah, really excited about it. And I, ultimately, I was just excited. I made a post. And I bring it up to my students all the time, but I made a post and made my intentions clear before I scaled my agency that I knew my passion was coaching students, but I could only coach on a certain level because I hadn't really gotten to the next level. And so uh, I really proved my point in 2019. I was able to scale really, really fast and then end up selling the agency uh, before moving into uh, back into coaching. But I made it very uh, clear what my intentions were. My intentions were to scale it big um, and then ultimately sell it to to pursue my passion for Okay. Okay. I'm not sure if you're, you're able to say how much you sold it for, but it's just to give you an idea how big it was, uh, how many people were, were working in it and what were you doing in that agency? Yeah. So we, uh, helped gym scale with a specific process, uh, to get them new customers. And, uh, we were servicing over a hundred clients across the U S Canada and Australia. So these are like a hundred gym owners. Yeah. Uh, over a hundred, um, uh, active at one time, and by the way, so like we had probably anywhere, probably anywhere from between 150 to 200 clients. Um, but active at one time we had a hundred. Okay. And so you were, you were helping them basically get more customers. Like, is that through like lead gen, uh, lead generation, or were you also like, like what were the, some of the services that you were offering? Exactly. Yeah. So that's pretty much all it was, was we, we did the leads. Um, and you know, there's a lot of agencies that even did better things that than we did that offer things all the way up into an appointment. Um, but yeah, we just strictly handled the leads. We had a specific process that we did over and over and over again. And, uh, and we just tailored the campaigns to the specific market for those, for those clients. Okay. And were the gyms that you were actually like taking on as clients, were there like one specific types of gyms or were there different in different industries? Yeah. So there were, um, there were more, well, mostly we had, you know, the gyms that were monthly recurring where it wasn't a whole lot of one-on-one, but we did have those one-on-one clients. Uh, we had a couple of mom and pops, but we grew uh, really big in specific franchises. I don't want to go into that, but exactly what franchise, but I'll say it's one of the biggest fitness franchises in the world. Um, and so we grew specifically in that franchise a lot and we had a, but we had a ton of, a lot of mom and pops and things. So for instance, one of the things we would run was 30 days free. That was worked very, very well for a specific franchise, but somebody who is doing a one-on-one can't do a, a month free. So we would of course tailor it to that specific person, but for the most part, the processes and stuff like that were the same. All right. Makes sense. So um, let's start now. Like how you got started with your journey. How, how did you start your agency? Yeah, man. Uh, so like I said, I've just been super blessed uh, up until this point. Uh, got started into the internet marketing space uh, after uh, a night in November of 2017. We were, uh, like I said before, I had a kid in high school and, uh, in November of 2017, we had graduated and, uh, I was standing in a kitchen full of empty cabinets with my fiance and we were trying to figure out how we were going to feed our two year old. 
And at that time I was, you know, I was going to school full time. I was working full time. I was trying to be a full time dad and, and, and somehow I still ended up falling short. And so that night just kind of lit a burning desire in me to just find a different way to provide for my family. And so, uh, shortly after that in January, we launched, uh, the social media guy, which was, you know, that was not my niche solution, but that was my, uh, first, uh, attempt at branding an agency. It was the social media guy. And we just helped, you know, local businesses get more customers using social media. And eventually, uh, later on, we, we ended up just calling it gym leads fast because we had a handful of gyms and, and I just decided to create a brand, uh, around, you know, specific testimonials and stuff like that. And that's when we really, really, really blew up. Okay. So I want to actually go, uh, go to that point. You said, you said that, you know, your, your family was in a really bad situation. So when you say in a bad situation, like, can you just give a bit more details in terms of like, like your, your like in terms of, uh, you know, you weren't making payments, you weren't having enough food. Like what were some of the issues you were having at that time? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of, we were just in a really tight spot. I think a lot of, uh, of entrepreneurs or, or really anybody in general can find themselves in, in tight spots at some points in their life. Um, but you know, I, I, when coming out of high school, I feel it, I really felt like I had a point to prove because, you know, there's all of these statistics around teen dads about how they don't stay with the mothers about how, you know, 95 or 99% of them, you know, will, will remain in poverty for the rest of their life that, you know, their kids won't necessarily get a, a good life growing up. And, and so I just kind of wanted to prove every, everybody wrong. And, and, uh, I felt like I was doing everything right. I mean, I, like I said, I was doing everything society was telling me to do. I was going to school full time. I was working full time. I was trying to be a full time dad. And I still found myself coming up short. And, and what that ultimately looked like at that point was we, you know, we didn't have any money for rent and just, you know, everything ended up working out, but just having the conversation of like, how are we going to feed our kid? We have no money. We have no food in the cabinets right now. Uh, it, it was definitely tough. I was like, how do we even find ourselves in this position? And so yeah, just felt like a complete failure, man. And, and that, that night kind of really allowed me to reassess my situation and, and realize that I wanted something more and that I wanted to, you know, pursue something bigger. Okay. So that night, like, what did you decide on doing in terms of changing that situation? Like you realize what you're doing is not enough. And wh what did you go on to do to, to make that change? Yeah. Well, I, obviously it didn't come to me, uh, right away. I spent a lot of time, uh, and self-reflection for like the next two weeks. Like I spent a lot of time alone. I spent a lot of time praying about it. And, uh, and yeah, oddly enough at the time I was hunting, we, that's something we do a lot in the South, uh, is, is we hunt and, uh, just that time in the woods alone in my own head, uh, really allowed me to kind of get away from everything, clear my thoughts and, and, uh, and just start, I would call it masterminding now, but, but I guess I was just thinking a lot. Okay. So, um, also like what was the, the type of job that you were doing and like how much was it actually, you know, putting, uh, an importance in your, in, in your life? How, how much, what was like, that? What was the job that you were doing and how much was it contributing to your daily life? Yeah. So, uh, it was, it was definitely, well, actually I just moved away from, cause I was working at Walmart distribution center and it was like a hour and a half drive to get there. It was really hard labor for like 12 hours. And, uh, and then I quit and I just recently started working. So I took a pay cut, um, but I started working for a gym doing their social media, uh, just like managing messages, really had no knowledge on it. Um, but uh, I just managing, he just was like, hey, do you wanna, wanna do this? Uh, and I was like, yeah, man, definitely. It's closer to the house. Um, so I took like, almost cut the pay in half, honestly. And then, um, you know, started managing their social medias and things like that. Um, messages, creating content, getting back with customers, replying to comments, things of that nature. Um, the management side of things. And, uh, okay. how did you find your first client? Uh, yeah, I just went, I, I really had no idea what I was doing. Like uh, for all I knew, I was the only social media person in the world at that time. <laughs> so funny. Uh, you know, if, uh, you really just don't know what you don't know. And I didn't know there were such things like you know, cold emailing and stuff like that. I, I really just, uh, I went door to door, door to door to door to door to door and got, I remember the first day I, uh, I launched the business. Uh, I could knocked on probably every business in town, like just as far as my car would go. And, uh, I was just stopping at every business looking to see if they needed, you know, social media management services. And, um, 
Went home completely defeated that day, by the way, because I didn't realize what it took. I didn't realize that you would get so many no's. But that, I think you know, that's standard for any entrepreneurs. You're going to get a, a plenty of no's before you get a yes. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, so I ended up landing my first car dealer client off of that. And then that same gym that I was working for that I ended up quitting, um, I went back to them and they became my second client and then so on and so forth. We had real estate, HVAC, um, and we just continue to crush for gyms. And so I was like, you know what, we're going to go all in on gyms. Okay. So you were doing this uh, part-time, like, like you had your warehouse job and then you were doing this part-time trying to get clients in your car around the city. Well, as the second, uh, yeah. So which, which is, what, what are you asking? What was I doing part-time? So I'm saying like you had your warehouse job and then you were trying to get yourself out of it by uh, going uh, and looking for social media clients. Yeah, no, I, t I quit the warehouse job and then I worked the social media job. Uh, as soon as I decided that I was going to start my company, I quit. I went all in. Like I literally quit uh, the job, uh, the social media job that I had because I was so positive that I was going to make it happen. And, uh, and I think, you know, taking leaps of faith like that definitely pay off, especially, especially, you know, you got to have, you got to have the uh, tenacity to do it. But, but uh but yeah, I think that was probably one of the best decisions I ever made. So many people would look at me and say, that's, that's a huge, huge, huge risk, especially considering what happened several weeks prior. But uh, I did it and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be happier with my decision. Okay, so before making that decision, did you have someone who was actually doing the something you were doing? That way it made it easier for you to get into it? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't start seeing, I guess, I didn't even start seeing like social media marketing ads until... I was in the space, I guess, because I was being targeted. My interest on Facebook started, uh, started coming up as like social media management, whatever. And uh, then I got hit with a retargeting ad uh, or a target. Just, I just got targeted by Dan Henry. And Dan Henry is a, a social media marketer that teaches, you know, teaches how to run an agency. And, and so that's when the whole simplifying my process to just being lead generation, that's when that epiphany came to me because I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go all in on Legion instead of offering. I mean, when I was, when I was offering to clients prior to that, which I, I launched in January, the very, very beginning of January. And I made that shift around January 20th, January, between January 20th and January 30th. And, uh, and I, that was when I, I bought Dan Henry's course uh, for like a thousand bucks. And that was, you know, I closed that first retainer at 2000. So that was a huge hit. But because I, I reinvested that money, I, it was probably one of the best investments I ever made because I was able to learn like, you know, what really matters to business owners and, and how to position it. And so, uh, yeah, I would say, I would say that it was more, more about learning that skill and what I was going to offer. Um, that's the real value that I got of it and not necessarily getting the customers because I did have to learn a specific process to do that on my own. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that was a, a complete game changer for me. Okay. So, um, when you quit your job, like, were you going to make more money from these two clients that you're getting the car dealership and the gym? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but I didn't know that at the time, like I, I had dug my way out of the situation that I was in and then I had opened my first credit card ever. And I was like, I am going to live off of this and, and quit my job and go all in on this and spend all of my time trying to figure out how to make this happen. And, uh, yeah, like I said, best decision I ever made. Super risky, super risky. And I wouldn't like necessarily tell one of my students, hey, do this right now. But that's a risk there if, that if they're willing to take, like, you know, I, I support it 100% because when you can really burn the boats like that, uh, I mean, that's when growth comes. Getting out okay, of here. So, so what was the promise that you had told yourself, like, by doing this, this is the result that you would get? Like, you know, your, your job was safe. You were getting a fixed income this you know, maybe, maybe you lose a client after a month or two months, maybe it's not consistent. So what was the promise you told yourself that by doing this and by going all in and burning the boats, you, you're going to be better off? Uh, honestly, I just, you know, in my, I don't, I don't know that I made myself a promise. I just knew that this was my other way, right? Like I, I said, like after I, I, that night, I really felt like I failed my family. I was determined to find another way. And this was that other way for me. Um, so I, I was bound and determined to make it happen no matter the circumstances. Okay. So were you looking at Dan Henry at that time and saying, look, he's so successful. He's gotten all the success. And then 
you know, I'm going to be something, you know, uh, I want to be like doing something similar to get my freedom the same way that he's doing it. No, I, like I said, I had no mentor going into this. I just had, I remember I was bathing my kid whenever I had the idea. Um, and then I was like freaking out. It was like my first big epiphany. Like I, I was, I was giving my kid a bath and then I was like, what? I was like, I was like, what I'm doing right now, I, I'm going to offer it to multiple businesses. There's got to be more businesses that need social media management. I'll just start a business doing this and offer it to different businesses and then I'll build income that way. Um, so that was my first big epiphany. I remember running through the living room and like, hey, babe, this is, I know exactly what it is that I'm going to do and how positive I was that it was going to work. And it was crazy. Like, because it was literally like a light bulb went off and uh, no mentorship, n nothing of that nature yet. Of course, would I have wished that I had a mentor? Of course, because, uh, y you know, they definitely speed up the process. But uh, also, I think taking action, you know, just m massive and perfect action, you know, gets results as well. And that's what I was able to do is like, I kind of framed, you know, I, I framed it, uh, you know, I just, everything that I did, I learned step by step by step by step. And, and that's, all there was to it. Okay, so you got the idea of uh, doing social uh, media management for businesses and you, you realize that a lot of people needed it. Um, how did you, what did you say to your first client, you know, for them to be convinced that they were going to take you as, uh, as uh, you know, someone doing that social media for them? Right, so uh, I remember, you talking about the first client, that, the car dealer client that I landed? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly what I said. I just remember saying, hey, listen, I can get you more customers. And because the first one I landed on social media management, right? And then I found Dan Henry's course, bought that. And so I, I binged watched that for like three or four days. And then I started offering the new solution. So every solution after that was just lead generation. But the first client, it was like, hey, listen, I'm going to do everything for you. And it was it, honestly probably one of the worst things you could say to a client is like, like, like it's just not realistic, right? You can't scale and do everything for somebody. You have to get very, very niche and solve a specific problem for a specific person. And that's how you scale. Um, but I didn't know that at the time I was just taking bond action. And, uh, but I did get them to close. It took like three or four in-person meetings for me to get that, that deal closed, but they ended up signing the dotted line at $2,000 a month. Oh, wow. So that's pretty high, you know, they didn't try to more, than, more than I was paid at my job. So I was, I was blown away. <laughs> I was so excited, man. And so, uh, were you like, were they not trying to like influence you to do it for free because you didn't have any results? Oh, uh, I just spoke with absolute certainty. I, I, I just made it. I, I knew I had to get it done, man. Like I said, I burned the boats. Like I had to get a deal closed and, and whatever they need. I was, I would say that's my biggest sales tip is you need to speak with absolute certainty, figure out what your clients want and then tell them you're 110% going to give it to them. Even if you have to figure it out, it's, you know, it's that resourcefulness thing, right? Like I knew that like if they needed to get leads, I would 110% figure it out. So I'd say, Hey, listen, that's definitely something I could do for you. I remember in between the meetings, I was going home and watching a, a ton of content on YouTube, trying to learn how I was going to fulfill this stuff as we were moving that client stayed with me and paid me over $50,000 man uh, for over two years. Wow. Um, so actually before going to this college dealership, did you do a bit of research before actually approaching them? Uh, no, that, that was, it's funny enough. That was actually, I think one of the first calls that I made because I was about to run out of gas. I didn't know any other way. Remember I said I was driving around town Well, I was about out of gas and I knew I had to, I'd make it to the house. So, that was the first number that I looked up and I called and I was like, Hey, I pitched the front desk guy and he was like, Hey, come in and can you explain this to me? So uh, I did. And, and then we, uh, and I believe I did it the next day or whatever. I went in, p pitched the front desk guy. He brought it up. I got an email from the vice president like the day after that. And then uh, he was like, Hey, will you come in on Thursday? And so we can chat. And then we went and talked on Thursday. We went, went and talked again on another day. And then he brought somebody in uh, so that, I could do another pitch in front of them. And then we uh, ended up closing the deal. Okay. So what did you say to the front desk guy on the phone to get him to invite you into the car dealership? <laughs> Honestly, man, I, I couldn't tell you. This was like two years ago now. So I, I don't remember exactly what it was. I know I was very, like I said, like I didn't know what I was doing. I think I probably went straight into my elevator pitch. <laughs> I was like, Hey, listen, I do social media. Blah, blah, blah. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, like you, you had, uh, but like you said, you hadn't even looked at it and you just did it blindly. That's amazing. So, um, 
but yeah, it just shows that you ha you gave something to them in value for them to actually pass that information on to the next person to actually ask you to come in. Yeah, man, it was uh, it was it's so funny. I, I laugh at myself all the time looking back now because I was like, how did I do it? You know what I mean? It, it was just it was uh, it was just uh, I, I guess I just burnt I had burned the boats to the point where I was like, I'm going to make this happen. I think that's a, a big difference between a lot of entrepreneurs. Some people go at it half. And some people go at it all in. And that's why you see some people grow over time. Like maybe it's a side business for a really, really, really long time before they end up actually going all in. But the people that go all in from the very beginning, you always see explosive growth in those people. And, and looking back now, I, I definitely think that was the, that was 110% the, the route that I took. So. Okay, great, man. So um, once you got into the meeting, you know, and this was something very new that at the time you were doing it. Like, how did you convince the person to give you $2,000? And like, like I mentioned again, you know, like you didn't have any results. You didn't have any experience. Why would they, you know, give you $2,000 when they didn't have any proof of, of how this could be actually done? Like I said, I, I would definitely revert back to speaking with absolute certainty. Well, first of all, presentation is, I already knew, I, I don't know why. I've always kind of known that presentation is a big deal. I, I went and bought a, a suit on a credit card so I could look decent in front of these people and, and, uh, made sure I spent like an hour getting ready for, for these meetings and, and, uh, just making sure that everything was like pristine or I, what I thought was pristine, everything looked clean. And, and, uh, I remember thinking like, I, I went to like a, I went somewhere and got some papers printed off that would, it was kind of like basically showed the system. Um, and, and yeah, so I just, that presentation along with absolute certainty, I think that's definitely what ultimately convinced them to say yes. And then just, you know, nobody really spends time closing deals over three or four. Like, I mean, it definitely took a lot to get the deal closed. Um, I mean, the hundreds of clients that I closed after that were mostly one call closes. Those people that came to me and, and, and that I just got on the phone and then we closed within like a 20 minute phone call. Um, but that one was, it was definitely a lot of work, but so, so, so rewarding to know that that my efforts going all in paid off. Yeah, definitely. Like I can see, you know, you put in so much effort just to, for your first client and it wasn't even promising that you're going to get him or not. Like you were searching, like he was going to get value out of it. That's why you were, you know, putting all this effort and stuff. Uh, did they try to like say like, Hey, can you do it for free? Uh, I remember they offered me a job and I turned it down. And, uh, and I don't know if he was joking, but I remember him saying, Oh really? It's funny. Not a lot of 19 year olds make six figures. And uh, I just brushed it off. I I'm pretty sure he was messing with me. But uh, either way, I was like, yeah, no. I was so convinced that I was going to make this happen and I was going to be able to create an awesome life for myself. I'd already kind of dreamed it, man. Uh, so I always like to talk about this. Um, I don't know how much you, you, you kind of indulged in the law of attraction, but I, I, was, I did MMA a lot growing up. So I watched the sport, followed the sport. And at this point in time, Conor McGregor was huge. And, um, he kept talking, I remember I was following him, watching his YouTube videos. And he kept talking about this, this mystical thing called the law of attraction. And, and, uh, and I wanted to know more about that. So I ended up finding this guy who named Bob Proctor, who broke it down into an actual science for me. And he was basically like, basically what the law of attraction is, is if you can convince yourself first, you can make anything happen because you have what's called a paradigm, which is, you know, when you're a kid, your paradigm is mushy and easily moldable. And that's, and you're, uh, ultimately when you grow up, it, it hardens. And, and so if you grew up changing, uh, trading time for money, uh, if you grew up around parents that traded time for money, ultimately that may be what your capacity ends up being unless you expose yourself to other ideas. So if you can convince your subconscious, your paradigm is with your subconscious mind, if you convince that first that you can do something, uh, then he said, you know, you can do it. And I just took it for what it was. And he said, the only way to train your subconscious mind to believe something is to say it, your, say your goals in present tense over and over and over again. And I did this thing that I always, always, always tell, them, tell my students to do is I had a 2003 Honda Accord, uh, broke radio, and I, I printed out uh, a, a list of goals that, for, that I was going to hit in, in 2018, coming out of 2017. And, and one of those things was, I'm going to make six figures this year. I'm, and and I, I remember saying, and it was so weird. I would say it aloud. And, and in the beginning, of course, it's very, very weird to say that because I just come off of a seven, like a 16 or $17,000 a year at, at my other job. So to say that I was going to make six figures uh, was kind of really, really off the wall, right? I remember when I first started to say it, like my girl was in the car and I would say it out loud 
over it. Like it felt like my tongue was going to fall off. I did that for weeks. And after a couple of weeks, it started to feel a little bit, it started to roll off the tongue a little easier. And eventually I started believing it. And sure enough, that next year we did six figures, man. So uh, I 110% believe in the law of attraction and convincing yourself and your subconscious mind that you can do something. Uh, but yeah, we, we did our first six figure year. <laughs> oh man, that's an awesome story. Um, so you got your first client and then what motivated you like to get your second client, you know? Oh, I was still completely at it. I mean, that was, you know, I sold this, uh, this car dealership and then I went back to my initial, initial, uh, the person that I was working for. And I was like, Hey, listen, we have this process. He gave me the time of day. He respected me. And so we sat down and when I was able to explain to him logically, now that I knew, you know, what Dan Henry, um, how to explain it in the terms of, Hey, listen, we're going to make you direct return on investment by doing, by using this system. Then it was, it was easier to close clients because I was able to actually say, Hey, this is what we're going to do for you. And this is what you're going to get out of it. That wasn't something that I was able to do whenever I closed the car dealer client. I was just like, Hey, listen, we're going to do everything for you. And that's what, that's what the value that I sold them on. Okay. So, um, so your second client, like, were they also trying to, uh, get you to, to like, did they ask you to do it for free? No, nobody asked me to do it for free because I set a higher standard. I let them know from the beginning they weren't going to get it for free. Like, hey, this is, this is my occupation now. This is, you know, and, and, and free doesn't put food on the table. <laughs> Makes sense. So um, while you were like actually like, you know, having your first client as a car dealership and then, and you were learning to how to do this yourself, like, did you not think having a second client would actually make it more difficult for you to learn the process? Uh, not really. At that point I was taking on, I was, my plan from the beginning was like, Hey, I'm going to take this full on. I don't care what it takes. Uh, and I'm going to figure it out. And so you don't really think about those things when that's your mentality. Um, and it, it definitely wasn't, I think because I was convinced that I was going to make it happen. It was just easy for, at that time. Of course, when I started getting five, six, seven clients in different niches, then it was a little bit of a different story. Then it got a little tricky. Um, and that's when I was like, you know what? I got to double down on one space so I can do the same thing over and over again. And that's when we started scaling big. And that's when I had to hire a team. Uh, and so hired my first VA and then we just brought people, brought VAs on as we needed them. So your first like 10 clients, you didn't hire anyone? No, 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 no. Uh, we had, and we, it was hard to get 10 clients all at once. We would have people, uh, I always, I call this thing the client trap, right? If you're in a specific, if you're providing a solution to a lot of different people, uh, it's very hard to balance those things. And I, the client trap is basically, basically what it is. It's like fear of, fear of, you know, going broke creates you, creates, it makes you take on anyone that's willing to pay you. Taking on any willing, anyone willing to pay you, uh, makes you, you know, lose clients due to lack of results, losing clients due to lack of results is, uh, you know, you're trying to solve problems that you're, you're not qualified to solve. So yeah, I did have that problem at some points. Like, you know, um, it like, specific niches that we couldn't crack there was nobody that we didn't get results for it was just tricky so maybe you know maybe a client stuck with us for one or two months and they didn't get return on investment right away um so obviously those clients are going to cancel and uh definitely don't blame them for it but uh we did our best and and but that's when you know being able to solve a specific problem for a specific person takes place because when you can get when you can become the best at one thing or or, or become a really powerful solution at just one thing then, uh, then you're able to, you know, scale. And, and obviously you have your processes are repeatable. So, you know, it's easier to perform. Okay. So when you were getting these clients, were you actually showing them results that you were getting for your previous, uh, clients? Uh, I, all right. I think we're, are we still in the, are we still talking about, you know, because my, I had this not niched agency and then I created my niche agency, which was gym leads fast. Uh, and then that's when, we, so are you talking about before I, I niche down or yeah, or, before, you, before you niche down. So before I niche down, um, yeah, I, I had gotten one video testimonial. We had made a gym $40,000 in like 35 days. Uh, and that was my, that was that second client that I got, which was my previous employer employer. And then after we made him $40,000, when you make some, when you get somebody awesome results, they're going to want to shout your name from the rooftop. So they definitely didn't mind giving me a video testimonial. Uh, and, uh, you know, we just sat down, went through the results and that's what I used. So it was my first video testimonial was actually me and my client sitting side by side. Um, but every, most of the video testimonials that we had after that was, um, you know, they were just recording a little video clip and then sending it into me. 